Hello and welcome. Thank you for joining me. I'm Jessica Woods, Energy Intuitive, and today I'm joined by my special guest, Lanigan. Catherine is an international best-selling and award-winning author of over 45 published titles in both fiction and non-fiction, including the novelizations of Romancing the Stone and The Jewel of the Nile. As well, she has contributed to over half a dozen anthologies, including Chicken Soup for the Soul, Living Your Dream, and Chicken Soup for the Writer's Soul. Her novels have been translated into dozens of languages. Several of her titles have been chosen for the Literary Guild and Doubleday Book Clubs. Her Vietnam War-based novel, The Christmas Star, won the Gold Medal Award top pick for, from Romantic Times magazine and also won the Book of the Year Romance Gold Award from Forward magazine, as well as Book of the Year Romance from Readers' Preferences. As a cancer survivor, she's a frequent speaker at literary functions and book conventions, as well as inspiring audiences with her real stories of angelic intervention from her Angel Watch series of books. So that's what we're going to be talking about today. We're going to be talking about, uh, based on her books, Angel Watch, Divine Nudges and Angel Tales. So please join me in welcoming Catherine Lanigan. Catherine, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely delighted you've joined us here today. I'm so excited. You're going to be talking to us about your books. And I know you've got some more, so you might mention those. But there's Angel Watch, Divine Nudges and Angel Tell. So it's all about the angels today. That's right. And, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think you were just about, you were going to start to tell me something before we literally went live. So yeah. about the angels, is that true? <laughs> what, what I do, what I do when we do, when I do a show like this, like yours, is I ask the angels to, you know, I, I say my prayers and I ask the angels to whatever they want to come through. I want them to, to speak. Is it, this is their show. It's not my <laughs> show. I'm just here with my Christmas decorations. <laughs> Yes, in my crazy in my crazy living room, which is under construction at this point. But um, <laughs> this is whatever information they want to come through, whatever stories they think are most important at this time or any messages that they have at this time. This is their show. And I'm here to uh, to facilitate that. And I bless you. And thank you again, Jessica. You're such a good friend to do this for us and for everyone. Yeah. Well, thank you. I mean, the thing I ought to say is that I just felt inspired to put these um, chats together to uh -huh. share, you know, remarkable um, people that are doing, you know, extraordinary things and might, might not always that it's like really sharing that wisdom because we can read it in your books. We, you know, mm -hmm. we'll find it in other ways through you. But I just think it's lovely to be able to share. And if the angels are along on board and absolutely running this show then <laughs> let's hand it over <laughs> exactly <laughs> let them have their show right <laughs> yeah i'm all for it <laughs> well i do know catherine that i've um your resume is absolutely amazing and one of the things that you had also said to me prior to us coming on here was that your professor, I believe at the time, the writing professor in college had said, you know, basically don't bother writing, it's not going anywhere. <laughs> and when I read that, I was like, wow, that's that's amazing because obviously yeah. not only did you have to deal with that at the time and you were obviously in college, I assume with the intention of writing. Oh, I was, I, I, I wanted to be a journalist. I wanted to be, I wanted to go around the world. I thought journalism is exactly what I, because I love adventure. And I just thought that's the career for me because I can write. I will meet very, very interesting people. The newspaper or the magazine will send me to, you know, different foreign countries and stuff. I'll get to meet really cool people and, <laughs> and interview them and write their stories or write about whatever it is that's, you know, going on. And, and I, was, I was a double major in, in literature and history. So I love all the history part too. And I always kept hoping that, you know, I get to interview a couple archeologists. That'd be cool. <laughs> but my, my, but my, when I was a fresh, I was, when I was a freshman in college, so it was just my first, it was my second semester of my freshman year. 
But my, <clears throat> excuse me, my first semester of my freshman year, I had had, I was in a Greek mythology class with the head of the English department of my school. And at the end of the semester, we had our choice. You could, you could take a, um, <clears throat> a multiple choice question and answer, you know, for your final, or you could write your own Greek myth. Well, I was the only one in the class that chose to write their own Greek myth. And it was supposed to be no about five pages, you know, five to six pages or something. Mine was 55. <laughs> <clears throat> so, so the, oh, the wow. second, yeah, right. I was just like, well, it just kept coming, you know, it, I, I just kept on writing and writing and writing. Well, anyway, so the second semester of my senior year, there was a traveling professor. I think he was from either Yale or Princeton or something, but it was an Ivy League college, you know, um, or university on the East Coast. And he was a traveling professor. He would go from school to school and he would teach here for a year and there for a year and that kind of thing. And so they got him for one semester to teach a creative writing course, but it was only meant for second semester senior girls. So, and almost mm -hmm. every girl in the class had a, had a job waiting for her you know, one was going to Mademoiselle, one was on the Washington Post, one was going to the New York Times. I mean, you know, it was a really good school with, and brainiacs went to the school, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So, so they all had, they all had talent. I mean, they were all very, very, very good in what they were doing. So they were really good in their journalism and, and how to write a story. So a month into this class, um, which was a seminar class on a Monday night, which was like four hours long, one of those things. And um, we had to, after a month in, we had to write our own short story. So I wrote my short story. And then what you did was you took your short story and you showed it to the class and then they would critique it. And then you go back and fix it and all that kind of stuff. Your basic editing, you know, kind of situation. Well, mm -hmm. the night before I was to present mine to the class, the professor called me and asked me to come into his office that night on Sunday night, the Sunday night before the class. And so I went over to his office and um, he's, you know, he was this big, you know, he had to be at least six foot six. I mean, you know, his big, tall guy, you know, with the jacket on and the horn rim glasses and the suede patches. And I mean, the typical, I mean, like right out of a movie, you know, just like right out of a movie college professor. Right. And his voice boomed. It didn't, you know, he didn't, he was not a soft spoken guy. So he's come in, Miss Lanigan, sit down. So I sit down and then I had my little manuscript of my short story and it's in a little folder thing, you know, and he takes my manuscript and he throws it at me. It skits across the desk, lands in my lap. And he says, frankly, Miss Lanigan, your writing stinks. Whoa. I mean, I, I'm lost for words there. So I'm thinking, what yeah. is next? <laughs> <laughs> like and uh, so I just and, and I'm only like you know 17 18 I'm a, I'm a freshman you know I'm I'm just like excuse me because all through high school my teachers told me that I could write they said I ha I mean even from a freshman in high school I started showing you know uh, the, the the that I had talent for something so mm. I just knew I I mean I I thought for sure he was going to say is this writing is so good you know I we don't even need to present it to the class I mean I'm I'm so set up for this <laughs> emotionally <laughs> I was, I was a mess. So I'm sitting there trying to fight the tears, which didn't work. And I said, I don't understand. And he said, you have no idea about plot structure. You have no idea about characterization. He said, and he just went on, on down the list. You know, your sentence structure is sloppy, blah, 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 which I had never heard. I mean, I had A's when I was in high school. I was, I was on a roll and all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't like, you know, so this is really out of the blue for me. Mm. And so anyway, he says, um, uh, the only thing I can give you is that your description is nice. And all I could think of was Catherine in, er, in um, Washington Square, where in Henry James's Washington Square, where her lover has just left and she's hearing the, you know, the horses yeah. hooves against the cobblestone streets and her whole life is in shambles. And her father turns to her and says, it's all right, Catherine, your embroidery is lovely. Oh, <laughs> remember that? I was just like, that's, it. that's what he's got to say to his, you know, daughter, because he's just paid off the lover to get the, you know, to get out of there so that she won't marry him and run away, you know, because he thought he was a fortune hunter, which, you know, it doesn't matter. She was in love with him, you know, they probably would have had a great time. <laughs> so anyway, 
I, so I'm just devastated. And he says, so the mm. professor, back to the professor, the professor says, there is no way that you are going to get through this class. And he said, I am very well aware that when you came in, you declared your, you declared, you, you had to declare when you came into the school, schools, what your goal was by the time you graduated. And I said, well, I wanted to graduate magna cum laude. And he said, I know you want to be a magna. And he said, there's no way that you're going to get there if you, if you, and he said, it's too late to pass or fa take a pass fail or drop this class. And he said, so you, he said, you've got to get a B out of this class in order to be able to keep on going through the rest of your college career. And he said, you're going to have to get an A in every class, which I did. And <sighs> except for math, except for the math, I did not do very well with the math thing. Wow. So anyway, so anyway, um, he, he says, I'll tell you what I will do. I will make a, a, um, I will make a, a bargain with you. If you promise never to write again, I'll give you a B in my class and I'll be in your crutches to get through it. And I said, it's, and I said, it's a deal. Oh. <laughs> well, I, yeah. So yeah. that night I took my manuscript to the top of my dorm with, with my metal waste basket and a, a pack of matches and I burned my manuscript and I said, I will never, ever believe in anything that I can't chew, see, feel, taste, spit out for dreams are, are a bunch of hogwash. I'm not going to believe in them anymore. You know, that's all that's, mm -hmm. that's like Santa Claus, your parents saying, you know, believe in your dreams, believe in Santa Claus. It's not real. So for 14 years, I didn't write anything. My girlfriend's being published <laughs> all over the place. I didn't. And I mean, I did. I, and I thought, well, I'll just read everything else that other people have written. So that's what I did. I, I read their stuff, but I did not write anything until um, I think it was um, uh, Labor Day of 1978. And I went to Austin, Texas. And that, that was when Judge Woods, <laughs> probably not a relative, right? <laughs> 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 Judge Woods was assassinated by the Hells Angels at the time. And I mean, every journalist in the United States was there. I mean, from the Walter Cronkite, Howard K. Smith, you know, I mean, Tom Brokaw, they were all there. Tom Brokaw was very young at the time. But I mean, they were all there gathered at the Four Seasons Hotel, which is where I was staying with my little boy and my husband at the time. And, and so anyway... I was a very non-assertive person at that time. And I went over and finally on the second day, I went over to this table where all these cameramen were and these writers and they were all writing and saying, no, that's not what we're going to do. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And I said to this journalist, I said, I said, I just want you to know that I think that the work that you do is the most most valuable work in, in, in the world because you're going in and getting the truth and bringing it out and getting it to the public. That's so important. And he said, and I said, I wanted to be a writer, but I have it on good authority that I have no talent. And so this one writer turns to me and he says, really no talent? Who told you that? And so I told him the story about the professor and he just looked at me and he said, well, you know what, if you wanted to be a writer, you'd be writing. He said, I got writer friends that have stacks of screenplays and manuscripts all over the place. They haven't gotten anything published, but they write every day. And if you wanted to really be a writer, you'd write something. Well, and, it, and he said, I'm ashamed of you. And my mother, that's how my mother got me to do everything from, you know, mowing the lawn to cleaning my room. It's, I'm ashamed of you because you haven't cleaned your room. You know? <laughs> so, <laughs> right? <laughs> so... So I went home. So I went home right after that trip, and I sat down with my son. my son had just gone to first grade. I sat down with his three ring binder in it with a pen or pencil, one or two, I don't know, and I started writing a novel. And when I had six hundred pages done, I I had my girlfriends type it up, and I sent it to this writer. Uh, he had given me his number or his address, I guess his address. And um, he, and so he, about a month later, I got this phone call from him and he said, you know, I got your book and it was damn good. And I went, what? <laughs> and <laughs> I'm thinking, I don't have any talent. And he said, so I sent it to my agent in New York and she's going to call you in half an hour. Wow. C Catherine, I'm listening to you. I mean, I, I can't wait for the next thing that you're going to say. This is like <laughs> unbelievable. I cannot yeah. believe 14 years went by from yeah. when you, when you, you know, got that conversation in that room at that time from yeah. that professor to that 
guy in the hotel mm -hmm. who changed who basically it changed, changed your life. Yeah, changed my life. And, and do you know what is amazing? The, I have heard so many stories in the past from people I've met along the way or you know wherever of people that that somebody said you know you're no good you're not going to achieve it and right. then they've turned it around and it's you know you must have known that on some level when you were back you know I don't know even before you got to college that writing was the thing was your passion that you wanted yeah. to do that's and what I say as I did you know I just yeah felt it. Uh, and what do you, I mean, like, obviously now, years on, what do you think that that you gained from that experience? Because obviously having that affected mm -hmm. your life in so many ways, but. Oh, yeah. Yeah. In hindsight now, what, what would you. Look well, the on? biggest thing now is, is that I do not, when someone tries to stop me, I, I, I look, I look more at them. And say, all right, now, mm -hmm. why are they trying to stop me? I did have a few years later. I mean, after I had published my first book, because that book, um, I said he sent it to his agent, and I mean, she got a contract for me in three months, and I had two publishing houses bidding on the book, and then it was published, and that, and that, and now, fifty books later, that's where I am. So I don't take that kind of um, um, directive for, mm. um, seriously, um, and I did have a, a, a psychiatrist. Uh, a couple of years after that first book was published. And he said, do you understand what that professor was doing? And I, and I said, no. And he said, first of all, that's a bargain with the devil. Uh, if you promise never to write again, meaning stop everything right now, I'll give you this. And he said, that's a, that's, he said, he saw something in you that he was jealous of. And there was jealousy all around that whole situation. And I think if more people understood that they all, all of us have incredible gifts, very, I mean, not just your talent, but we have intuitive gifts. We have psychic gifts. We have um, ability to really receive information in our dreams and we just pass it all off you know, because mm -hmm. it's not accepted. It's, you know, not accepted. This isn't accepted. That isn't accepted. It's just like when I, the first time I saw an angel, I was three years old mm -hmm. and my mother was just like, well, no, you didn't, you know, you know, <laughs> first of all, she said, you don't even know what an angel is. And I said, and I said, well, she said she was an angel. <laughs> oh, do, do, do you know what I'm hearing here is I'm wondering how many people are going to be listening to this and have had either a childhood experience like you know you say no you didn't see an angel you didn't see granddad whoever it is um yeah, and exactly. also with regards to um basically sabotaging people's passion uh, exactly and, you know i you you said the guy was saying the psychiatrist was saying yeah you know do you know why and for me you got gave me the confirmation because i i picked up when you were talking earlier there was a lot of jealousy and it was his own stuff going on mm -hmm. and because you are such a talent. And isn't it quite sad in a way that people feel so threatened that they will, the actions they take in order to, you know, steer someone else or move someone else away from something is really quite, I don't know, fascinating. Is that the word to, to describe? Yeah. And, and I, and I believe right now, Jessica, in our world, we have more of that going on than ever before. It's like this, there is a, you know, a lot of people talk about the world between, I mean, the war between the principalities, you know, good and evil going on. Well, that's it. That's the yes. good. That's the evil is each one of us has so much light and so much energy and so much goodness in us. And there, and there are those that are so threatened, you know, or they want what we have. They want our energy. They want our, they want to suck our, our, our love and our energy out of us as in mm -hmm. abusive relationships. I wrote a book on abusive women and how they have, you know, gotten out and um, not to mention, I mean, not that there aren't men that have the same situation because they do. Yes. Um, but at that time when I wrote it, it was, you know, for women, but um when you have that kind of vampire coming in, there's just a whole lot of them right now. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're seeing for each one of us on our daily basis. We know we all can't go out and be Joan of Arc and save the world, but we can certainly save our own world and turn our own life around. And when we do, and we create more love and more light and more energy in our own 
sphere, it has that ripple effect that goes out into the ocean of the world, the universe, really. You yeah, know what you it, think about. It, it does. Totally. Yeah. Um, you know, I know you're seeing it and mm -hmm. I'm certainly seeing it. And I know many, many people are, that are. And there are so many people that are finding within themselves this conflict, I believe, in some mm -hmm. way as well. Can we bring the angels in, in the sense right. of what would the angels say about about this time right now with regards to that this you know as you say some call it good and bad a war or peace right what would the angels say about this catherine if if there was something they'd want to add the, um right before the pandemic started this would be i think it was in august or september of 2019 so that because the pandemic was just starting out of you know china and coming into new york and starting to spread that fall in 2019 and i had um <clears throat> a visitation it wasn't a dream you know because i literally was woken up and i heard my name and I woke up and I saw Jesus standing at the door of my bedroom. And he said, I want you to go to the front door and open it. And then, and he walked to the door and I opened the door. And that's important to know is that mm -hmm. I'm following what he said. And I did the action of opening the door. He did not open the door for me. That's important. So I'm, I'm saying I surrender to your, your goodness. I surrender to what, you know, to your charge. I am your servant. That's basically what I'm saying. When yes. I do that action, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it is. So I opened the door and I looked out on the, uh, across not, as you know, we live on a golf course. And when I look out my front door, there is a fairway that goes straight down about almost a mile, almost a mile straight down. And we can see straight down to the, you know, the, and it's just beautiful. It's gorgeous. But anyway, I stood there and I looked and I saw the 10,000 angels. You know how they always talk about Jesus and his 10,000? Okay. This yeah. was the 10,000 standing wing to wing, touching wing to wing, just glorious with uh, so much light. I can't tell you. I, 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 there's no way to describe the feeling I had, what I saw, but wing to wing and how they were just resonating this unbelievable love for the planet, you know, for every one of us, for every tree, every plant, everything, you know, every animal, everybody. And all they said was, we are here. Mm. Now, 10,000 are always supposed to be on the periphery of the world. I've always seen them, you know, just outside, you know, are <clears throat> not 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 even that far away in space but you know just around the world protecting they're always protection so protection mm -hmm. is the number one but this time so i knew something bad was going to come i didn't know what it was you know and as you know there's there was no astrologist nobody knew what it was that was coming a lot of people predicted it was going to be a war a, you know a world war 3 that kind of thing <clears throat> so I prayed that it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that, but it was the pandemic. Now, what I, now looking back on it, what I find is interesting is not one of them did their feet touch the earth. They were not standing on the earth. They were just hovering above it. Meaning we are here in your realm to help, but we still are not part of the earth. We are angels. We are not human. Mm -hmm. You walk the earth. You took the charge. You know, there many times I can remember growing up in my Catholic church that the, the priest always said, remember, you're a, you're a human being. You're above the angels. We have because we chose to come to this walking on hell to to make make the universe better. We're not here to go shopping and you're not here to, you know, just buy stuff or, you know, just live in your bubble. You're here to really make the world a better place. You really are. To be a good citizen of the world is how my father raised me, you know? And mm -hmm. that's what they were saying is we can't do it. We can work through you and we yes. can work with you, but you have to, you have to be, because you are on the earth, you have the power to walk the earth and do these things. And doing those things is prayer, but even more right now, it's to 
I really want to say it's meditation more mm. than prayer. Prayer for too many of us, prayer is like, oh, I want a new car, you know, help me pay the bills this month, you know, let me yes. get a new job, let me find, you know, a date for the weekend. <clears throat> that's not that's not prayer. What we need to do is pray f- is to see the earth surrounded in love, love energy going through every single person so that they all connect mm-hmm. on a love basis. On, but they, that's the highest frequency is love. Yeah. You can't you can't get any more in it. Yeah. If Scott Fitzgerald would say. <laughs> <laughs> Come to my <laughs> my favorite lines in literature. So um, the angels right now, because I've had uh, all through the pandemic, I had certain visitations and stuff, which are actually not in my books, but um, and and messages. And they are all about what we can do with our minds and our hearts. We have to work through the love that's in our hearts to, and we can change the world. We can we can do this. We can change mm-hmm. the world. We can fight, we, but we fight with our hearts. We fight with our love. Yes. You know, when Jesus came, he said, you know, turn the other cheek, love your enemy as, your, as yourself. Well, mm-hmm. you, know, you got to change your world and make your world full of joy and love. And then that way you can go out to your enemy, to the ones who are jealous and want to stop you in whatever way they want to stop us, whether it's at the ballot box or, Mm. you know, whatever. Yeah. I mean, I, I, when you were talking there about love being the, the ultimate, it is, it absolutely is. is. And I'm finding a lot of people are really, including myself, are really waking up to that. It's like a different level of that. And, mm-hmm. and being aware of the presence of that love that is you, through you, mm-hmm. when we then are able to really understand that in a way that perhaps we haven't before, because I think there's so right. many connotations around what love is and what isn't. Yeah. But when you truly, really begin to expand into that world of what love is, you then can not only change yourself, but then you can send it out into the world and actually right. make such a huge difference. Right. And that's really what your dream was was saying is that yeah. we can we can help you, but you have to help yourself. And I think that's so important for humanity to hear right now. Yeah. So many people have been, you know, looking for others for love, looking for others to bring that light into their lives, but it is only through finding it ourself and being open to it. That's I right. love, 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 love what's happening now. Repeating the word love there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. It's a good thing, you know? And mm-hmm. and each time, you know, when people say, well, I've, I've never seen an angel. And, and I, I say, yes, you have. You're just not paying attention. That's one of the biggest things with, with humans is we – Oh, we explain this away. Oh, that's just circumstance. It was just a coincidence. You know, yes. every single thing does have a re. Everything that happens to you does have a reason. There was a reason for that professor to tell me that I didn't have talent because when I finally did start writing, you could not shut me off. <laughs> right? You made up for it for sure. I, you know, I, if if he hadn't been there. I might not have been so angry when I finally figured it all out. And I, and I was just, I was writing four and five books a year. Wow. So, and, and holding down a job and taking care of my son and, and my family and everybody. But I mean, that was just unstoppable. So all of that did work out in the end. It's just like, it doesn't, we're all, we're all too, um, Twitter happy is what I call it. You know, we all want it to happen in in less than a sentence without perfect punctuation. And we want it to happen right now. And it, and so much Mm -hmm. of, of everything doesn't happen right now. It's, we need to, you know, patience is like a lost art, really, you know, you want something, you go to Amazon and, and, oh, you'll have it tomorrow. Okay, good. (laughs) You know, Whereas you used to have, to, do, I don't, you probably don't remember, you're too young, but we used to have, when I was in high school, we had layaway and you went and you picked out what you wanted and then you went and paid $5 a week on it. And so by Christmas, you had all of your gifts paid for, but oh, you yes. be patient all the way through August, September, October, and November and December to get it paid for 
but it was, mm-hmm. but it was there, but you learned that kind of patience just out of that simple thing called layaway. You know, I just, yeah. yeah. Um, fun. Excuse me. Um, yes. What I was, uh, this throwaway society almost, isn't it? Where, as you say, it's got to, if it doesn't happen now, we've got to, you know, like next, next, next. And yeah. what I see from the angels if, I, I mean, I call them many things. Sometimes I experience them as guide, ascended masters, angels. You know, yeah. obviously there's different names for the same Christ, the Christ, right. Christ consciousness. But the, I don't think that we really need to be patient in some way because if we can just take the, the understanding that they're already there, then they're ne- not separate from us. They're um, not separate from us. They're all around us. Exactly. So they are always there. And I think it's just being brave enough or crazy enough, if you want to put it like that, to say, well, I'm just going to see what comes back when I imagine or when I think about that they're there. I wonder what they would say to me. So I like I like questioning. I always say, well, if you're there, um, you know, show me show me or tell me something that I need to know through dream state or whenever. So right. you're not expecting it right that moment, maybe, but sometimes it does show up. And yeah. also another good thing that I, I, I kind of like is having that idea that if they're all there, then I get a sense, you know, you can get a sense of them, even if you're not visual, even if you don't know because you're not using those senses that we have in this reality, you know, right. the, to see them. Um, and just th- there's something about comfort, isn't there? And that love that you're saying, because they have, they are love. They are pure love. Nothing. They, are, nothing pure love. they are pure love. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and also as you know, the, the more you just talk to them, one of the thing, one of the things I say in angel watches is not that they are watching over us is that we're watching for them. Yeah. So if you, you watch, say, you know, you watch for each of the signs or watch for their presence or just really try to feel them. The more they will come in, the more they'll be you know, more interactive, the more they'll show up in your dreams. And then when they do, when they do help you, just say thank you. You know, it's mm-hmm. gratitude is a very, very big thing in the universe. It really is. And we mm-hmm. just don't say thank you enough. I mean, even when the sun, you know, the sun is coming in and going out here and, and we, I just say, thank you. You know, we have sunshine, which is unusual in Northwestern Indiana. <laughs> 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 so I get all, ha- I get all happy when there's a sunshine, so, but it's just even the little things. And then those little things all build into the big things. But there mm-hmm. are many times where angels literally do show up. I mean, you can, um, A lot of times uh, I will say that it's not just when crisis happens. You know, I do have a lot of stories where they're near death experiences. I do have a lot of stories, not just mine, but other people, because I chronicle what other people do. But uh, and or not just when you're, um, you know, there's a, you know, I have a lot of I get a lot of um, when I do a show like yours, as I get a lot of email from truckers and truckers have a lot of angelic um, experiences. It's really interesting. I don't know if it's part of it is I think because they're on the road and they get into that state, that kind of a bliss Mm -hmm. state where they're, they're very open. They're not really thinking about anything. They're just going down the road and it's easy for an angel to come and talk to them or be there with them. But I love their stories, especially, you know, the ones where I started to fall asleep. I was going off the road and there was a second pair of hands on the, on the wheel of the, truck and then pulls it over to this, you know, and then gets them straight on or um, the car crashes where the whole car, you know, rolled over three times. And then, and I just woke up and I was on the other side of the road, not without a scratch. Those kind of, those kind of stories, you know, Um, one happened to my son when he was about eight years old, he used to make these wooden um, Christmas scenes for people, you know, nativity sets and stuff like that. So he was going around on his bike, eight years old, getting his orders for the fall, you know, to make, to paint, put out all this plywood and, you know, paint, <laughs> yeah, paint the baby Jesus, right? So <clears throat> he was coming out of this one area where there were condos all together. And this lady was coming down in a big, like Ford Bronco, hit him and, and 
I was at home writing. I can't remember what I was, but I was, I was at home. We were working on the computer and I, this woman comes to my door, bangs on the door and she says, lady, lady, your son's been hit by a truck. And I mean, for me, I was in an alternate universe. I, it was just mm -hmm. all of a sudden I, I, I just thought if anything happens to my son, my life is over. It's just done. You know, if he's been hit by a truck, he must be mangled beyond recognition, you know? So I ran across to, to the, inter, you know, the intersection where he was, which was only a couple blocks away. It wasn't that far. And I was, and there's my son, you know, eight years old, sitting on the curb, not a bruise on him. And his, his bicycle is behind the truck, had clearly gone underneath the truck. It's completely twisted and mashed. He's sitting on the curb and I'm going, Ryan, are you all right? Are you all right? And he's going, and I, and I pick him up and I'm looking, you know, I'm pulling down his pants to see if he has internal <laughs> bleeding. <laughs> he's so embarrassed. He's like, mom, what are you doing? <laughs> and I said, I'm checking you out. Well, I got to get you to the doctor, you know? And, um, he had sprained his ankle was the only thing that happened to him. And he said, mom, it was the craziest thing. He said, I felt the truck hit me. And he said, something picked me up and put me on the curb. Wow. That, that is truly. Now that's my amazing. own. Yeah. That's my own yeah. experience. My son, my son's experience. And I mean, he said, and, and all along he kept saying, I, I, I I'm going to miss my bike. I, I love that bike. And I said, well, we're going to have to get you a new one now. <laughs> Well, that, that, that is, is really remarkable and obviously amazing that yeah. he, he came out with a sprained ankle. Yeah, that's But cool. also, yeah. you know, that you're his mum and it happened to your child and you right. you you write about these things. You know, you're mm -hmm. writing about all these things, near-death right. experiences in your book, as you say, angel visitations. Mm -hmm. I think many, many people have these visitations from angels. And I know myself that, and I'm talking about in what we perceive as flesh and blood um, right. rather, rather than having, you know, the experience of your son felt like something had picked him up and moved him. I mean, those things we know happen. There's many, many people as well. I've heard these right. stories, which are incredible. But the ones where I think perhaps people are, are probably less aware are when they appear in person. They look like they're literally somebody sat next to you on a bench, for example. That's right. And again, I, you, I'm sure you have have experience of this or recounted this in your in your writing. But I there am. are that's happened to me a lot. And then I turn around, I think, ah, oh, that was an angel because in the moment I might have, and I, I can't think of a literal experience right on the spot here. But I know I've been somewhere and somebody's come up to me, said something, and it was just exactly what I needed to hear. Then when it, as soon as my mind's clocked, hang on a minute, they literally disappeared. And I, they and vanished. I, they, get, they vanished in front they of your eyes. Yeah. yeah. And then that feeling you're left with is I've just been in communication or touched by an angel or something because it's the feeling you get with it. It is. Um, so I don't know if you can... I do. Yeah. I have I have several stories like that. I have one that um, there was this girl. She was probably in her 30s at the time, and she was driving in Dallas, and she got lost, and she was in a very bad part of town, and she was going, and she was trying to find some place. She needed to get some gas. She was low on gas, and um, she went around the corner, and and of course she went right into gangland, right. And there's different gangs hanging on the cor on the you know each corner, and um, she she went around the corner and she did find a gas station. She started to pull up, and then the gangs started walking towards her. And then this va white van pulled up right behind her, and this priest got out, and he said, "Do you need some help with your gas?" And she said, "Yes, I do." And and she said, let me, and he said, all right, I'll get your gas for you. And he said, you know, this is a bad part of town. As soon as I fill up your gas tank, I want you to get in your car and I want you to drive away right away. Don't, don't come back here. And she said, well, I'm lost. And he said, when you get in your car, you'll be okay. You'll know, you'll just go straight. Just always just keep going straight right out of here. You'll, you'll be fine. She went into the car to get her credit card to pay for the gas and the car was filled up with gas. He had obviously paid for it already. He had vanished. Everything was put away. 
she just turned around. I mean, he was completely gone, but the van was gone too. <laughs> so in the time that she just went to, she the door was already open. She went to pick up her purse, turned around, and he and the van were gone. Now, I know the ones where, like, where you're saying, because I've had those where I just say, oh, I would just want to say thank you for telling me that, you know, and then they're gone. But this one was, this car was gone too. I love that story. <laughs> I love that story too. Yeah, I that's mean, really, that's a really good one. It's incredible that yeah. these experiences are happening probably a lot of the time and people don't even realize because that's something, that's something huge, isn't it? If you're in a dangerous yeah. situation. I do, yeah. I, I do know somebody who had a similar thing where they were, uh, um, basically about to be raped um, and literally yes. I, I, I'm so sorry I can't remember the whole story because this was many years ago I heard this but it was absolutely true um, and somebody like stepped in or something saved saved the day and yes. and, and it obviously was an angel because completely disappeared yeah. so I think if anyone's got any doubts about angels and I think there's been a lot of bad press that you know they're fantasy they're they're made up things well yeah life is made up if we want to take the fact that it's an illusion on some level so why wouldn't um we get that help and and know that we're nurtured yeah. supported and loved so i love it i love hearing those stories <laughs> yeah one one of the stories that i do want to tell you is about when my dad when my father died um both my parents were at the grand canyon um this was in 1987 both my parents were at the grand canyon and my mom had a heart attack and so they, you know, they called 911 from the Grand Canyon, picked her up. And then my dad followed in the car down to, they went to Flagstaff because that's where the hospital was that they had to take my mom. So they were wheeling my mom into ICU and outside the doors of ICU before my dad could get through, he dropped dead outside the doors of ICU. He was dead for 22 minutes. They banged on his heart. They broke his sternum, his clavicle, all of his ribs. Wow. Um, trying to bring him back. They paddled him out, at least twice that I know of. Um, <clears throat> Cause my mother didn't see it. She, you know, it was the nurses and the doctors that told her what happened, but while he was dead, he, um, let's say then my sister and I flew, she was in Chicago. I was in Houston. We met in Phoenix and then we took a puddle jumper, you know, up to Flagstaff and got there like at midnight. And I was really, really late. That was back when you could, you know, you could fly, you could fly, you know, now you can't fly anymore, but you could fly back then. Well, anyway, so as, as soon as I walked into the room, my dad said, oh, Kath, I am so glad you're here. I've got so much I have to tell you. But the first thing I have to tell you is I have to tell you that I love you. Well, now, oh. all, the time, all the time I was growing up, my father never said I love you without me being saying, I love you, daddy. And then he would say, Oh, I love you too. You know, that kind of thing or love you too. That kind you know, mm. but it was never just forthcoming, you know? So, and I, and I, I was like shocked. I was, wow. You know, you want to tell me that you love me. And he said, well, I have to tell you what happened to me on the other side. And I said, what do you mean the other side? Now I knew what the other side meant, but he, he was very, very Catholic. And, um, Catholics call it heaven. And I said, you, I said, you mean heaven? He goes, well, that's actually not what they call it. They call it the other side. And I went, okay, now my father was an attorney. He was one of the most brilliant men I've ever met and my brilliant people I've ever met. He had a photographic memory, Phi Beta Kappa Key. You know, and a, I mean, he was just really, really smart. Hi, tough shoes to fill, you know, when you're the kid, you know, trying to yeah. Like that. And I didn't get that photographic memory. I would love to have had it, but I, I, that's the gene I didn't get. You, know? you all would like that one. No, I would like, I'd like to get that in my gene pool next. Well, anyway, so he said, when I got there, he said, I talked to the being of light. And he said, and I said, you mean you were talking to an angel? And he goes, no, no. Angels are the other guys this was a being of light and you talk to the being of light first before you can talk to angels later, but you have to talk to the being of light first. Well, I didn't know that. And he, I said, well, what did he say? And he said, and he said, they said that they were sending me back because I had not learned the, the only lesson that everyone is supposed is sent to earth to learn. And I said, what is that lesson? And he said, it's the lesson of love. Oh. You're only sent here to learn the lesson of love. And he said, I haven't learned that yet. So I have to go back.
But he said, the rest of the message was about you. And he said, you know, you're going to write a book. And I said, well, you know, daddy, since I've written eight or nine books, that's, you know, not new. And um, he said, well, it's not going to be like any of the other books. This is going to be different. You are to, you are to write angel stories. You're, he said, you know, you've been seeing angels for a long, long time. And I said, yes, I have. And he said, well, you know, I'm sorry that we didn't believe you at the time oh, yeah. when you were young. And, um, but you have to write down all these stories that were in our family about us seeing angel, you know, your grandfather and, and everything that you've seen, you've got to write them down, but you're also to chronicle, listen to other people's stories and then chronicle them and put them in a book. And then, because that book, those books, you will be, when you come to the other side, you will be judged on those books when you die. Wow. I know. <laughs> Right, and I was like, "No <laughs> uh, <laughs> pressure." Professor says you can't write. Yes, I can write. Right? <laughs> the angels from the other side, you will write, or you're going to be judged. And I'm it's like, amazing. "Okay, well." I said, "I said, boy, this, this, uh, these grade cards, they just don't end, do they? <laughs> you know, somebody's always grading you on something." <laughs> you you couldn't make this up, though, really, could you? No, Honestly, you can't you make this think, up. You think about this. Your father has a death experience or a right. near-death experience as it's obviously called and comes back and again you're involved like your son you right there's, there's so many links with you with yeah. obviously writing sharing this information right and i mean and he didn't have any stories about any of my brothers or my sister or anybody it was just about what i had to do that this was that mm -hmm. you know all my writing was preparing me for this time in my life and so many things have happened that are all about this time this time period because mm -hmm. we really are on the brink of when we need the angels here that those 10,000 you know mm -hmm. i can't tell you how awesome and humbling that whole thing was you know when i saw it i was just shocked like i'm not seeing what i'm seeing but I'm seeing what I'm seeing and I'm hearing what I'm hearing. And I'm just like, wow, you know, we need to, we need to pull this together, gang. You know, humanity. Absolutely right. going there. <laughs> exactly. Because <laughs> at this time, I mean, you know, you said it a couple of times at this time, this is such a pivotal time, isn't it? It this, is. That people start to take away that myth that it's, you know, made up stuff or that people right. are delusional. I mean, people have been locked up in the past years for this through generations, oh, through, you know, the witches, all of it. It's all been covered up. And now it's coming to light that, and literally to light that love is the most important thing, that we're to remember that we are love as the angels are. Right. That, and and to talk about more of these things, to, mm -hmm. to share these experiences. I love the fact that you're writing about it. And you yeah. did say to me that you've written uh, over 45 books. I think you mentioned yeah. 50 before. You've got a couple that you're writing at the moment. Are they are they along the lines of angels? Because I know you're yeah. so diverse. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they are. Yeah, I've got I've got two more angel books that I'm that I've got ready to rock and roll. So so we're gonna get them out there. Yeah. Good timing. I think yeah. now, as you say, very good timing. Yeah, it really can you, is. Can you give us any little tips about what so uh, they might be or anything that the angels would like to share or anything you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, the biggest thing, you know, as I said before, is the biggest thing right now is, you know, every person can't go out and, you know, we can't conquer the world or change the whole world, but we can change our world and we can make our, our own world full of more love, more light. And mm. when you do have a dream that's, uh, an angel or a, a like maybe a, a, a grandfather or somebody coming to you and saying, you know, I'm okay. Everything's fine. I love you. Say, I love you back. Say, yes. thank you for coming to see me. I want you to come again. I want you to be around me. Every Friday night I have, I have these little candles and bowls all over the house, you know, over the house. And I, and I light them and I say, well, I light them for all my dead people, but that's who they're for, you know, is because, 
they are, they, they're just in the next dimension, but they're still all around. I've had mm. people come to the house and say, wow, this house is just so full of love. So full of, well, it's not just my love. It's mm. all the other people who have been here, you know, and, and my grandparents are here. My parents are here. My mm. sister is here. You know, it's just, and it's a, they know they're welcome and they're protecting. The other thing that right now is the angels are protecting us, you know, and uh, there, I, you had said something earlier and uh, so many people are, uh, you know, doing a lot of, a lot of podcasts about how this dimension is really a hologram. We're really living in an alternate matrix, another reality, another, this, but you know what? It's still our reality. This is our life, you know, and, and there are a lot of beautiful things about it, you know, and there's mm -hmm. so many beautiful things about this gorgeous, wonderful, loving, fantastic planet that we need to, that if more of us just keep sending love around the world and, and through the world to, to each other and just to nature, you know, spend some time in nature and keep that mm -hmm. all going and send it to mother earth and send it to the heavens and, 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 and the angels were, are there and they will come in. And when you see one, smile and say, thank you for coming. Because <laughs> they, they, they will. They will. They will. Yeah. More and more, more. I do believe that that's part of the shift that's happening yeah. right now is that more and more people are going to hear the angels, see the angels, and be part of that angelic realm. Because we are so important to them. You know, we, and we are, we have our feet on the earth. We can do everything that they would like us to do. And they want us to do for the betterment of all, because the betterment of this planet, the betterment of our lives leads into all the universes and throughout the whole, all the galaxies and everything. It's just, it's, it's such a wonderful thing. You know, it's a wonderful world. I've noticed more and more the I was meditating one day and quite often I will deliberately just float into you know wherever but on this particular occasion I was suddenly aware that there were not one two or ten but hundreds and thousands of angels all around me and I was like oh you know sort of almost like I've woken up from a dream but I still was in my meditation I was like right. okay I mean I normally sense a lot of you or, or different beings uh, right there are so many of you and they said this is how it's going to be we've always been here but you can now see us more clearly that's right and other people will start to see us more yeah. clearly um and when i say see obviously you know i'm t i'm talking about through my intuition which i call my sensory perception of that reality right. in in our meditation so just to be clear for people that may not know but and then I just, for this went on, they kept reinforcing it. I'd be going to make myself a cup of herbal tea or something. And I'd suddenly feel them, all these uh, angels, so many of them. And I was like, wow, this is like, and they mm -hmm. kept on doing that. And I think it was to reinforce, we're here, we're here, we're here. Right. And open up my perception, because I think that's what it does. It opens up your perception which could be like, oh, well, an angel might appear to suddenly, oh, yeah, that's, I'm getting a sense of my nan who's passed over or my father right. or whoever. Right. But they want us to really know now. That's what I'm getting. And that's confirming what you're saying is just be more open, be more. Yes. If you think that angels, what do they represent? They represent love, do they not? They are our they loved are. ones who have passed over or there are, you know, guides if we want to call them those that right. are here to help us in this reality to remember who we are to love ourselves right. more and they bring that message don't they of love so they do. who in their right would not want to listen to angels even if you think you're making it up you know you'd be crazy not to want to listen to love and to experience exactly. and feel love wouldn't you Exactly. And, but, and the real, you know, the angels that are the species of angels with the wings and all, they are, they are the messenger of God, you know, to, to come through all of the universes and the galaxies in order to bring his love, their love, God's love to mm -hmm. us so that we can feel that and be, and be fortified. There are so many times in my life, 
Uh, one time in my life, I had an angel come to me. I was, I had cancer. I thought, mm -hmm. you know, my life is over. I had all kinds of, you know, marital problems at the time. It was really a bad time in my life. And this angel came to me and I just said, who are you? And he said, I am strength for you have none. Wow. And, yeah, it was so lovely. And literally he said, get on my wing and feel my wing. And I felt this wing. And I mean, that bone of that wing was like a girder, like a steel girder. And I thought this angel can do anything. And he said, get on my back and you fly with me. And when you fly with me, you will feel what kind of power you can have. And I knew that, and I knew when I flew with that angel that I could conquer that cancer, which I did without chemotherapy, without, you know, I, now I had surgery. I do believe in surgeries yes. and, uh, but I did not have radiation. I did not have chemotherapy. I did everything holistically. I diet, um, a, an incredible amount of meditation and, mm -hmm. and music, I, I absolutely believe in, you know, there's so many on, on all over the internet. You can get these fabulous um, um, frequency meditation music um, that are yeah. just raise your consciousness like crazy. And they're so lovely. I mean, don't vacuum, put that music on your phone, stick it in your back pocket and then vacuum. <laughs> yes. I, I, I do the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Or listen to inspirational, um, I don't know, meditation type things, you know, yes, where just sort yes. of like just drift off into that beautiful space. It is a so beautiful you, space. I, I, I really think that that story, well, it's not a story, but it's your story of right. the angel of strength coming to yeah. you and, you know, just letting you know that you were, that you're strong as well. Right. I mean, it, I, I'm just and everything, you know, and we all want to hear everything will be okay. And mm. that's what the angels want to say is everything's going to be okay. Just yeah. stop looking at everything else out there because you can't do anything about the media and you can't do anything about this, but you can do a whole lot about your life and, and the power that a single person has in their meditations with their mind and their heart to send out love and goodwill towards men. I know mm. that this is Christmas time, but I, you know, I love that Elvis Presley song. If, if every day were like Christmas, it, <laughs> it, what a wonderful world this would be because everyone would be sending love and we would be living in that frequency, in that vibration, mm -hmm. in that world, in that place. And we are going there. We are going to, a, we, yes. you know, whether we like it or not, we, we are evolving, you know, yes. every person is evolving and the veil is thinner. We are going to start seeing more angels. We're going to start seeing more and more of our moms and dads and our loved ones who have passed on. I mean, the other day I saw my dog that died 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 I think the thing is what we're saying here is they're always with us. They've always, yeah. always have been with always us. Always been And there. they always will be. And, and they always how will wonderful be. is that to know? But, do you know, I absolutely have enjoyed chatting to you, Catherine, so much. I really could do this again and again and again. Well, let's and I'm do sure, it again and again. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We will. In the meantime, what I do want to um, share with people is your website because I think this is important if they want to find your books follow your right. work you've got your new books coming out and you've got screenplay there's so much that you've done so please check out <laughs> Catherine's website catherinehannigan.com and Catherine and to everybody watching thank you so much I have enjoyed it immensely and I hope you all have too Oh, I have. I have enjoyed it. And I know everybody will, you know, anytime you want to talk about angels, I am definitely here. And there'll be more stories by the next time we chat. <laughs> there will be indeed, no doubt. And I look forward to them. Thank you, Catherine. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>